When I was working on my high-speed photography setup a while back, I started messing with soap bubbles and films. I was trying to make a system to detect the exact moment a bubble pops for a high-speed photography project, and it actually worked. But along the way, I became entranced by the surprising beauty of these soap bubbles. To me, they kind of look like a vibrant gas giant planet. And I was so excited about this that I posted it to Reddit. But why do soap bubbles appear the way they do? And how come this part of the bubble is completely transparent and doesn't seem to show any reflections at all? Well, we can answer these questions, but first we need to talk a bit about thin film interference. When light strikes the film of a soap bubble, some of that light is reflected off the surface, while the rest is transmitted through the film. Likewise, when the transmitted light hits the back side of the soap film, some of it is again reflected while the remainder is transmitted. The light that is reflected passes back through the first interface and is refracted back out along the angle identical to the first reflection. That's simple enough, but because of the proximity and the coherence of these two rays of light, they can actually interact with one another. The second light wave has to travel a longer distance as compared to the first, and as a result, the two waves may be in or out of phase. However, if they are in phase, there is constructive interference, and that particular color will be enhanced. Thus, whether a certain wavelength or color of light will constructively interfere or not depends in part on the angle of incidence. Here is a glass mask that I had laying around that was once used to make computer chips. On the back side is a very thin film, probably an anti-reflective film, but we'll get back to that. As I rotate it in the light, you can see that the color of the camera sees depends on the angle that is being presented. However, we can also see that the interference will depend on the thickness of the film. To prove this, I created this two-dimensional soap film and hung it vertically. We can clearly see that the color of light being reflected depends on the height of the film. That's because gravity pulls on the fluid in the film, causing it to be thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. Repeating bands of color appear because the waves will constructively interfere at integer multiples of film thickness. As a result, the thickness of the film can be backtracked and probably look something like this. But why do we see white at the top? Well, in that region, the film is so thin that no single color is constructively interfering with itself, and all wavelengths are making it back to the camera, somewhat equally. So we see it as white. But something interesting happens as the film thins even further. In this region, the film reflects no visible light at all. The same is true for the bubbles. As the bubble gets larger and larger, we see that the color is changing because, as we learned, the thickness of the film is getting smaller. Just like the 2D film, it goes from orange to white, and then we see regions where it's completely transparent right before it pops. Here's an even better example with the stationary bubble. We can again see banding as a function of height, changing as time as the fluid is pulled from the top of the bubble to the bottom. And then right there, the bubble has become so thin that no reflections are possible. Look closely, you can actually see the reflections disappearing. Shouldn't we just see white? The reason we don't see white is because there's something I forgot to mention earlier. When a light ray bounces off of an interface, that first ray of light will actually be phase shifted by 180 degrees, or half a wavelength, if the index of refraction of the first material is less than the second. <sighs> so, when the film is so thin that the extra path length traveled by the second reflection is negligible compared to the wavelength, again, the first reflection will destructively interfere with the second because of the phase shift. So these bald spots, for example, on these bubbles indicate that this portion of the film is probably only about 10 nanometers thick, and it's no wonder they pop shortly after. Likewise, these little black dots are just really thin film rising to the top of heavier, thicker portions of the film that fall. However, I definitely don't understand the dynamics at play here, and perhaps that will have to be saved for another time. These concepts can be applied to practical uses, and most optic systems, for example, have a thin film coating to cancel out certain wavelengths. We also see thin films in nature all of the time. The wings on insects are a great example, but you've probably seen it just on the street on a rainy day. I thought I'd end this video with a few images that I took of some soap bubbles, and now equipped with an understanding of the physics, I think they're even more interesting. Thank you.
Thank you.